Hi, Kenny here. Um, I did a, a live uh, Facebook session not terribly long ago and uh, had trouble getting the camera the right way around. And that may put some of you off uh, viewing it that um, maybe are even meant to uh, view and uh, hear the content. So I thought I would do a, a sort of a quicker uh, version and put it up. And effectively, this is vlog, I think, 14 in the uh, Lockdown Magnifying Lens series. Um, just to help some of you who are seeing things about yourself that you don't like to find rest in the love of God. And um, yesterday in 13, at the end of uh, that vlog, I encourage you to say over yourself each and every day as often as is needful. Abba, I belong to you. It's a wonderful thing that when we came to Jesus, we were uh, brought into the very belovedness that he um, lives in uh, with the Father, that actually we're invited into that relationship by sheer grace, nothing to do with our own uh, merits. And some of us have real difficulty living there. That's where we actually live now. It's where we're going to live for all eternity, even more so, because now in our weak state, in our frail state, already we're children of God. But what that will look like in eternity, well, who knows? As uh, C.S. Lewis says, if, if we could see ourselves and one another as we will be uh, one day uh, in heaven, in the kingdom to come, then we'd be strongly tempted to fall down before one another and worship one another. So now we're the children of God in frailty and in weakness, and uh, then we'll be the children of God in glory. What an amazing prospect. But some of us find it difficult to live in that present and live in that future. And I'm trying to uh, say things that I hope will help. This is not a system. It's not a one uh, size fits all. I just hope that uh, out of these, well now 14 vlogs, that some of you might find hints that uh, may be helpful to you uh, to help you bring the bits of yourself that you're feeling really almost perhaps rejecting and feel very uncomfortable when you look at them how can these parts of yourself and your story find rest in the love of god and i want to pick up what i was saying in the live session uh, take your medicine every day would be the first thing and the medicine of course is the truth of god's words that counteracts the lies of the evil one. But when I say take your medicine, I, I don't mean that you trust in taking your medicine. Some of us turn our Bible reading into a work. I've known people that have read their Bible every day for their whole life, and yet they seem to have so little about the joy of the Lord and the freedom of Christ uh, in their lives. And it doesn't come through even in their character or uh, the way they um, talk about God, the way that they speak about themselves and the way that they treat one another. Uh, when I talk about taking your medicine, I don't mean making that your trust, you're taking the medicine. I mean somehow that you trust the medicine is doing its work, the truth of God's word. And uh, I take, oh dear knows, maybe about 20 pills a day at the moment uh, of, of physical medicine for, for my various physical conditions. And, uh, you know, I don't particularly think about them when I'm taking them. I just take them and trust that they're doing their work. Listen, there's place for serious study of the Word of God, but there's also times just for allowing ourselves to receive it and to trust that it will do its work. I dislike the way that ministers say nowadays, let us listen for the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. And uh, it's powerful as we allow it to work in us, even when we don't understand how it is working. And so what I would suggest to you is that you find uh, Bible verses that seem to speak into the areas where you feel weak or where Maybe you're rejecting yourself, leaving parts of your story out, into the co out in the cold. If, for example, you feel that uh, nobody showed you love or affirmation, that you felt almost like an orphan, bereft of care and so on, then what about this verse? 
from Isaiah 43. Uh, Do not be afraid, I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. Or if you feel guilty and shame about the past and you can't seem to find your way into rest of soul that you're forgiven, what about taking your medicine every day? There's no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. What about if you feel very alone? I am with you always. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. There's various verses that could address that. And when you feel that you've no right to call yourself a child of God, to those that believe, believed in his name, in Jesus' name, to them gave he the power, the right, the authority and the enabling power to become children of God. So whatever your verses might be, it will vary depending on your spiritual disease. Maybe even just write them out and read them to yourself three times a day. There's an amazing thing happens with the Word of God. That as we read it and simply receive it as we read it, even if we can't fully receive it, if we simply read it and somehow trust in it to do its work, then as somebody said, There's nothing wrong with being brainwashed when your brain needs a wash. So allow the truth of God's word just to wash your brain clean of the lies and the insinuations of the evil one and of any hardness in your own attitude towards yourself. Second thing, just be open to recognise the touch of God's spirit. Some of you have said, well, I don't feel loved by God. And uh, I think for, oh, I don't know, 20 odd years, I never felt the love of God. I believed it up here, but somehow it didn't, didn't touch my heart. And I think that was because I was entertaining wrong ideas about God and what his touch would feel like. Because I had a sort of view of a, a God who was never quite satisfied with me. And somehow uh, the idea of him touching me got mixed up with it must be a, a, a hard touch, a school teacher touch, the touch of a judge. And so how could I expect to know and receive his love when I was uh, believing that that's how he would regard me and how he would touch me? I think another misconception sometimes we have is that because the Spirit of God came as a rushing mighty wind like a hurricane on the day of Pentecost, and God knows uh, we could do with that again as the church in these days. But often the Spirit of God just touches us very gently as well, like the rustling of leaves on a tree. And you know what I've found, especially in these uh, years of weakness and illness, because despite the way it looks, I have a battle with physical illness and mental exhaustion most part of every day. And um, I've found that uh, God can touch us so gently. And you see, where we're hurting and painful and weak, it's actually a gentle touch that we need. And some of us are very hard upon ourselves. And you know, countless times I've recognised, as it were, the touch of the butterfly wing. Maybe you're looking for something tremendously overwhelming. That can happen. It can be a glorious thing when it does. But what if what you really need is the touch of the butterfly wing? Just God coming near in great love and great tenderness. I remember one of my elders teaching me that. He said, Kenny, sometimes the touch of the Spirit is just like the touch of a butterfly wing. It's almost as though you could miss it. And you have to catch hold of it, as it were, and bring it back to your awareness. Even just the other night when I was getting worried about something, a situation that I couldn't control, I just felt the touch of the butterfly wing, just the touch of the Spirit of God. And I knew that that touch was saying, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things will be well. So the Word of God and the Spirit of God. 
And the third thing I would say is you need to be gentle to yourself, just as we're talking about the gentle touch of the Spirit. You need to be gentle to yourself, not hard against yourself, in the place of your uh, weaknesses and, and frailties. Sometimes we can despise our weakness. I remember one therapist saying, putting in my hands a useful tool, and I've used it a lot when uh, pastorally. Sometimes I'll say to people, what's a baby worth out of 10? And leaving aside the issue of abortion, let's go down, not go down that um, very serious uh, road at the moment. In a pastoral one-to-one -one situation, I'll say to people, what's a baby worth? And most of them will say 10 out of 10. If they don't say 10 out of 10, then there's some pretty deep damage there. Most will say 10 out of 10. And then I'll say, what's a baby with a handicap worth? 10 out of 10. What's a baby from another country worth 10 out of 10? And then I'll say, what are you worth? Very rarely do people say 10 out of 10. And then I say, so where did it go wrong? And sometimes they'll tell me about things that they themselves have done and they feel ashamed of. Sometimes they'll tell me about things that have been done to them or not done to them by other people, including parents and significant figures, spouses or whatever. And it's left them with this feeling that there are, are parts of my life that where how can I value myself after I did that? Of course I don't value myself because nobody ever valued me. And we can look upon these painful moments of our life, these weak moments, almost with rejection. I'll just keep them away. Do you know why I love Jesus most of all? It's because he came to us in such weakness came to us as a baby and that baby needed love and care and looking after isn't that amazing the son of God came in such vulnerability and weakness isn't it amazing that he lived in vulnerability do you remember how he called disciples to be with him and then to send them out and sometimes we we think he, the being with him part was so he could teach them and send them out what if part of the being with him was because he wanted people in companionship around him? Do you remember his vulnerability? He said to his disciples when many were rejecting him, will you also go away? And then think of him on the cross. So weak. So utterly undesirable that people saw no worth in him. Some folks saw him as being there because of his own fault. And others, the sight was so horrific that they couldn't look at it. And others looked at that weakness and mocked it. But you know what? It's Jesus there in utter weakness that at the age of 13 drew forth all my love and my heart and the giving of my life. It's a topsy-turvy kingdom, the kingdom of God. You would honour and love and care for a baby in its weakness. So why be hard at weakness that you see as you look at the story of your life? Frailty, damage. Is it time for you to treat what you consider as weakness with the honour and tender compassion of the Jesus who came in weakness to the crib and died in weakness on the cross? Somehow weakness and vulnerability is of the very essence of what is valued in the topsy-turvy kingdom of God. So don't push these weak things away. I 
by God who understands weakness and pain and you're maybe waiting for him to blast you with his power. I remember at a time where I felt so weak at the start of my illness, so incredibly weak. And I was filled with shame that I should feel so weak and I felt so useless because I couldn't work and I still can't work as much as I'd like to, not by any means. And I felt Jesus drawing incredibly near. And you know how I saw him drawing near? In the tears of my GP. Because she sensed my struggle just to offer myself care and love. She saw I was pushing myself away in my weakness. Will you let God draw near to what is hurting? And I would encourage you just to be still in his presence. And ask him to help you be aware of the butterfly wing touch. So I hope these thoughts bless you and help you. And I just pray for you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the gift of your spirit. And I simply pray for what I've been speaking about. A touch of the butterfly wing. May that touch of the Jesus who understands weakness and pain and who knows how to deal with that with tenderness and gentle touch. May that touch be upon us by the Holy Spirit. Help us not to miss it, but to receive it with wonder and delight and see its beauty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye for now. I hope to do another live session. Hope to have my camera around the right way next time. Bye.